cycle one, week 15. We're going to go ahead and start off with timeline. Japan's isolation. Jamestown and Plymouth Colony founded. Age of Enlightenment, Age of Enlightenment <laughs> circa 1650 to circa 1800. Hudson's Bay Company. The First Great Awakening. Classical Period of the Arts. The Seven Years' War. So it'll go something like this but with our emotions. Japan's isolation. Jamestown and Plymouth Colony founded. Age of Enlightenment, circa 1650 to circa 1800. Hudson's Bay, wait, Hudson's Bay Company, the first great awakening. Classical period of the arts, the Seven Years' War. Let's try that again. Japan's isolation. Jamestown and Plymouth Colony founded. Age of Enlightenment, circa 1650 to circa 1800. Hudson's Bay. Company, the first great awakening, classical period of the arts, the seven years war. Getting better, let's try it one last time. Japan's isolation, Jamestown and Plymouth Colony founded, age of enlightenment. Circa 1650 to circa 1800. Hudson's Bay Company, the first great awakening. Classical period of the arts, the Seven Years' War. Very good. We're going to go ahead and move on to our metric measurements. We are going to do some math, and this is what we were learning about, our metric measurements. We have millimeters, centimeters, centimeters, here's a meter, and then meters and kilometer. So 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer. And here we have metric measurements. 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter. 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. And we sang this to 10 little Indians. So let's try it out. 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. 100 centimeters equals one meter. 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. Metric measurements. And then at the end we went quack, quack. 10 millimeters equals one centimeter. 100 centimeters equals one meter. 1,000 meters equals one kilometer. Metric measurements, honk, honk. And we tried again. 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer, metric measurements, oink, oink. Let's try it one last time. 10 millimeters equals 1 centimeter, 100 centimeters equals 1 meter, 1,000 meters equals 1 kilometer, metric measurements, roof, roof, meow, meow. You get the idea. Let's move on to our English. We had helping verbs. We did this last week and we learned with this old man, we learned this part of a helping verb. And so this week we are going to learn do, does, did. Let's try that again. Do, does, did. And we practiced putting these into a sentence and Sarah helped us do that. My little puppet, Sarah. And um, we're going to go ahead and sing these. Helping verbs, do, does, did. Let's try that again. Helping verbs, do, does, did. Helping verbs, do, does, did. Helping verbs, do, does, did. Do. Which, uh, let's see, do you want to go to school tomorrow? Do you want to go to the playscape? Does. Does the car work? Did you do your homework? Did you ask for a piece of candy? Those are how these words work. And that was English. Helping verbs, do, does, did. You got it. Okay, well, let's go ahead and move on to our history. We were talking about Prince Henry in the 1400s was when Prince Henry, this is Prince Henry, a picture of him, 
in a place called Portugal. Portugal. He founded a school of navigation. His work advanced European exploration and trade, including the slave trade. So we sang this song, and um, let's see. In the 1400s, Prince Henry of Portugal founded a school of navigation. His work advanced European exploration and trade, including the slave trade. And then I think here we rolled our funny dice. We took funny dice. I have um, two different dices. One of the dice has like standing up or sitting down or plugging your nose. And then the uh, other dice has um, different things like, um, you know, a man voice or a squeaky voice or a mouse voice or uh, a high voice or a soft voice or a loud voice. And so um, we did that. So like, for example, if we were doing standing, I'm standing and plug nose. Let's try that. And maybe like in a, yeah, um, I guess we'll do plug nose and, and in a high pitch voice. In the 1400s, Prince Henry of Portugal founded a school of navigation. His work advanced European exploration and trade, including the slave trade. And that was Tell Me About Prince Henry of Portugal. So let's move on to Latin. Latin, we had our first declension noun endings, and we have a, uh, like up, a, uh, I, I, um, ah, uh, like ah, uh, open up your mouth, ah. Uh. And then here we had I, arum, like a room, is, as, is. Okay, so let's try that. We're gonna come over here. You can sing them here. We'll start off with singular, holding up one finger. Uh, I, I, um, ah. Uh, I, I, um, ah. Uh, I, I, um, ah. Uh. Singular first declensions and plural is, uh, plural is I, arum, is, as, is. I, arum, is, as, is. I, arum, is, as, is. Plural first declension. You got it. Let's move on to science. Oh, this was my favorite. This was my favorite because we're going to sing this to the song of Hey Jude. And before we do that, before I bring out my harp, let me show you. We're learning about the continent's highest mountains. And so what we did is we took a, um, a world map and we found all the different continents. Asia, South America, North America, Africa, Europe, Australia, and Antarctica. And we sang a quick song that went along with this. And we did North America, South America, Europe, and Asia too. Africa, Australia, Antarctica were through. And we pointed on the map to all of those. North America, South America, Europe, and Asia too. Africa, Australia, Antarctica were through. And so... I guess it would be over here on your map. So it would be North America, South America, Europe and Asia too. Africa, Australia, Antarctica were through. We did that a couple of times, locating where the continents were. And then we found, we sang this song, Hey Jude, with all of the different names of the highest mountains. So we have Everest, Aconcagua, Denali, Kilimanjaro, El Bruce, Kosciusko, Vinson Massif, and Antarctica. And so I'm going to go ahead and sing that song for you <clears throat> with the harp. Everest in Asia, Aconcagua in South America, Denali in North America. Kilimanjaro in Africa, El Bruce in Europe, Kosciusko in Australia, Vincent Massifus in Antarctica. These 
These are the continent's highest mountains. Everest in Asia. Aconcagua in South America. Denali in North America. Kilimanjaro in Africa. Kosciuszko in Australia, Vincent Masifus in Antarctica. These are the continent's highest mountains. These are the continent's highest mountains. And that was so much fun. We did that for science, doing all of the different highest mountains in all of the continents. And that was so much fun. Doing that song to Hey Jude. And then we're gonna go to our last thing, which is geography. Geography, we have the Middle East, Israel, the Sinai Peninsula, Suez Canal, Cairo, and then the Gaza Strip. Okay, so to help out with that, I have this handy map that I'm gonna show you. We have Israel is in blue. It's this area. Then we have the Sinai Peninsula, excuse me. It's this pink area and it's like poking down. Do you see? It's like, it's like poking down onto this blue water right here and that's the Red Sea. Then we have the Suez Canal and it's connecting up. It's connecting from the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea. This blue area is the Mediterranean Sea. And then we have Cairo, the little green dot. So we make a little dot. And then we have the Nile River, which is right here going up. Okay. And then we have the Gaza Strip, which is this little purple area. And it looks like a little jelly bean. Do you see that? It looks like a little jelly bean. And so we had so much fun in that. So we're going to go ahead and sing this song. Here we go. Let's try it out. Middle East has Israel on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The Sinai Peninsula pokes the Red Sea. Suez Canal connecting up. Cairo in Egypt. To the east is the Nile River. The Gaza Strip, a little jelly bean on the southern coast of Israel. Middle East has Israel on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The Sinai Peninsula pokes the Red Sea. Suez Canal connecting up. Cairo in Egypt. To the east is the Nile River. The Gaza Strip, a little jelly bean on the southern coast of Israel. Middle East has Israel on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. The Sinai Peninsula pokes the Red Sea. Suez Canal connecting up. Cairo in Egypt. To the east is the Nile River. The Gaza Strip, a little jelly bean on the southern coast of Israel. That's, that was all of our memory work that we did for this week, cycle one, week 15. For science, um, we had a tough time today staying on track, on time, um, because we had so much fun in art and we had so much fun in science and we had, really honestly, we had so much fun with our memory work. Everybody was having a great time and it just kind of led to our day being a little late, but we made it all work and it worked out perfect. And sometimes um, things can happen like that, but y'all were so flexible, so thank you for doing that. We learned about our great artist, Angelico. Okay, and Fra Angelico, the word Fra means brother, kind of like a Mr. or Doctor. And then we also learned about his drawings and pictures and paintings and how he used gold leaf um, to make halos around the angels and um, around Jesus. And so um, he drew a lot of um, different paintings and fr fresco and a lot of the Montessori's and um, the person... The, he also showed with the golden halos that there was like an inner goodness shining out for
for everyone to see, and the halos were often made with real gold, not with just gold paint. And so that was incredible to see. And here you can see a picture of him and, and a lot of his work that he did. But um, we, we actually painted... Um, <clears throat> Um, we, we painted a picture of an angel and um, with paint, with um, temper paint, and then we took these aluminum foil um, gold halos and we like cut it out to the shape of the head and at the last part we glued on this like gold um, halo around the angel and it turned out beautiful. It really was a, a pretty project. And then in science, we learned about fossils. Yes, we did. We learned about fossils. And let me show you a few of these pictures so you can see the fossils. We, um, here are some of the fossils. And today we discussed the different types of fossils and how they were made. And a couple of things were that um, over time, layers of sand and pebbles and dirt cover and weigh down this like mud molded around this um, like print, like a molded print. And um, after years of erosion, um, part of it is exposed and the paleontologists then gather an excavation team to dig it up for research, the footprint of an animal or not just an animal but like bones or um, a shell and that's what we did a shell or insects or different things um, w uh, would make a mold and that mold is called a fossil and a mold fossil is a plant or an animal print that has hardened into stone it can be shell print or a footprint a leaf print or even a print of an entire animal Sometimes mud or sediment fills in the mold print and hardens just like our liquid plaster, which we used in our, in our um, science experiment. And these are 3D copies of prints called cast fossils. So what we did in class was we took a seashell and we coated it with Vaseline, um, petroleum jelly, to help the seashell when we stick it inside of the clay um, it, we would be able to easily pull it out. So we took the shell and we pushed it inside of the clay and we then pulled the shell out and it left an imprint of um, the, the shell. And so this is kind of how, well this, this is how fossils are made. And so then um, we did a second part where we poured in plaster of Paris, we mixed it up and then we poured it inside and then it would harden and make, um, <clears throat> it would make a, a fossil where it was uh, a mold fossil. So we had cast fossils and then mold fossils. And um, then we also t did our song, our scientific method song, which is to the tune of Pop Goes the Weasel. Um, scientific method is question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, conclusion. The scientific method is question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, conclusion. That's it. Scientific method is question, research, hypothesis, experiment, analysis, conclusion. And so we worked on that and a really cool thing that we found with the experiment that we did, um, we found that when we were doing the fossils and seeing how they were preserved, um, the clay has an imprint of the outside of the shell and the plaster looks like the outside of the shell. The layer of clay and the plaster are both examples of fossils, an impression or trace of organisms from past times. The clay represents the soft mud of ancient times. Organisms made imprints in the mud. If nothing collected in the, imp in the prints, the mud dried, forming what is now called a cast fossil. When sediments filled the imprint, a sedimentary rock formed with the print of the organism on the outside. This type of fossil is called a mold fossil. There we go. That's the difference from the two. I was looking for that. And so that was called prints and we had fun with fossils. And the last thing that we did was our presentations. 
for review. We did exercising. We um, also played some really cool games with shoe horses, um, 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 horseshoes, and then we played um, with the go fish game. It was so much fun. And then for presentations, we worked on posture. And so posture is to stand tall. Posture should be confident yet relaxed. And y'all did such a great job with that. I will see y'all next week. God bless your week. And I can't wait to see y'all next week. Bye.